to the first episode of Rocket Talks. Uh, I am your host, Rocket Guy. Um, so yeah, for the first episode, we will be covering liquid bipropellant rocket engine power cycle. So what does that even mean? What is a liquid bipropellant rocket engine power cycle? That seems very, that sounds very complicated, um, but it's really just a way that you can actually categorize your rocket engines, right? So, um, so pretty much the first thing first, what is a power cycle. A power cycle basically revolves around how power is derived to feed the propellants through the turbo pumps and into the combustion chamber. Um, it's just like I said, a, an easy way or at least one of the ways that you can categorize all of the different types of rocket engines, right? Every single rocket engine is unique in some way or another. However, each one usually follows one of these five or six different kind of categories that we'll be covering today. Um, so the main thing that you need to know uh, starting off about these power cycles is that you have two different types of systems. You have an open cycle system, and this refers to basically any system that does not have all of the propellant and its byproducts go through the engine. Um, this usually refers to a, a gas generator cycle, and gas generator cycles um, can be found on the Merlin 1D, both the vacuum um, variant and the core stage variant. Um, it's probably the most common type of rocket engine out there. Um, it was also used on the F1 engine and the J2 engine, which were both used on the Saturn, the Saturn V. Um, so now that you have the open cycle system, you also have the closed cycle system. Um, and so a closed cycle system, is, as, as I'm sure you can guess, is just basically a system where all of the propellant um, goes through the engine and nozzle. And none of it is actually wasted by either throwing it overboard or, or you know, attaining losses due to a secondary flow. Um, so basically all of your propellants are used to spin the turbines and then all of your propellants are going through the combustion chamber um, and out the nozzle. So that's that's what a closed system is. The last one that I wanted to get through here was is actually known as a combustion tap-off cycle. Um, so what do I mean by what is like what is a combustion tap-off cycle, right? We've been talking about you know tapping off your propellant and oxidizer or your fuel and oxidizer to run like a gas turbine and a pre-burner all night. A combustion tap-off cycle actually refers to an open cycle system, so no longer is this closed cycle, it's an open cycle system, and you're actually tapping off your combustion, from your combustion chamber, your combustion products. So here you have the main gas, or here you have the main combustion chamber in your rocket engine nozzle, right? You, you tap off your combustion products directly, directly from your main combustion chamber. And this gets fed along here it turns your fuel pump turbine, turns your oxygen uh, pump turbine, and then gets fed out and actually dumped just like the gas generator cycle, right? It just gets dumped overboard. It's an open cycle system. And actually in this kind of case, I believe this is actually modeling the BE3 engine. So Blue Origin's BE3 engine, which is what's used on uh, New Shepard, actually uses this exact design here. Uh, you have a regeneratively cooled rocket engine nozzle with your fuel. You regeneratively cool it with your fuel. And that gets directly pumped into your combustion chamber after going around the, and cooling the, uh, the rocket engine nozzle. They combust as it gets mixed in with your oxygen into the combustion chamber. They get mixed, it combusts, and that's what you tap off, this superheated expanding gas, to actually drive your fuel pump and your oxygen pump. Um, so I hope that kind of uh, helped explain what that is, that diagram. There isn't like a very clear way I can model that in KSP, unfortunately, just because it's it doesn't have like really many moving parts, and you just kind of tap it off your combustion engine or your or your combustion uh, your combustion chamber to actually feed your individual turbines. Um, so what are the advantages and disadvantages of such a system? Well, your advantages are that this does not have a pre-burner or a gas generator of any kind, right? It's a pretty simple system. You're taking the already hot gases that you're already creating, and that's what you're using to drive your turbo, your turbines and your turbo pumps. Um, so this simple, simpler design has a lot less complexities in terms of moving parts and cost part, or part cost um, and all that sort of stuff. So, um, and also something like this, since it is so simple, it also does in fact have a lower development and testing cost, right? Because it's a simple engine design. All you have to do is tap off your combustion products and it can run your turbines, right? So pretty simple. What are the dis disadvantages of this kind of system is, uh, it's really, really hard to start, right? You can imagine it's hard, it's hard to create a startup, um, you know, ignition sequence for such a design because your turbines are run off of your combustion products. And so you can't get combustion unless you have fuel flow, and you can't get fuel flow unless you run your turbine. So it kind of creates a really difficult and complicated ignition system um, to actually operate this sort of design. 
You also have really, really harsh uh, turbine operating pressures and temperatures because you're now tapping off directly from your combustion um, chamber, right? Your combustion chamber is meant to operate at really high pressure, really high temperature, and I mean really, really high temperature. And your turbines can, you know, have to be able to tolerate that temperature and pressure. So it's a very, very difficult kind of system to actually, uh, to you know, to wrangle into being able to keep itself from blowing up and melting. Um, and then, of course, its main disadvantage is, uh, just like a gas generator open cycle, is that it is, in fact, an open cycle system. Uh, so therefore, you get lower performance due to secondary flow losses, right? You're now taking that flow that you're tapping off of your combustion chamber, and now you're dumping it overboard. So you're losing some of your propellant that could actually be ejected out of your nozzle for, you know, most optimal thrust. And so that's what you're losing, and, um, you know, that's where you're losing your ISP. Um, so yeah, some examples include the BE-3, which is uh, currently being developed uh, by Blue Origin for the New Glenn. It's actually already in use by the New Glenn. And then you also have the J-2S. Just like the J-2 engine, which was supposed to be, the, which was the upper stage of the Saturn V launch vehicle, they had announced and proposed that they create the J-2S, which was a variant, a future variant of the J-2 engine that was supposed to use a uh, tap-off cycle, a combustion tap-off cycle. Um, just for simpler design, uh, a little bit more reliability, and that sort of thing. So that's what was supposed to be um, developed later um, for future Saturn V uh, vehicle de derivatives. But um, since Apollo got canceled and Saturn V got shut down, there was no need for that. So that did not come uh, come around. So the BE-3 is actually currently the only one ever developed and flown in terms of the combustion tap-off cycle. And that, that, ladies and gentlemen, concludes our first episode of Rocket Talks. Thank you.